Hello everyone and welcome to the second lecture. In the second lecture we are going to learn about some of the basic concepts of transaction level modeling. So in my first lecture I mentioned that both OVM and UVM verification methodologies were are built on top of transaction level modeling concepts. So it's kind of important to understand some of the basic concepts of transaction level modeling like what is a transaction, how transactions can be used to communicate between different uh, components and what are different kinds of channels that exist for transactions to be communicated between different components etc. So we'll learn about those concepts in this lecture. So we'll start with what is meant by a basic transaction. So transaction can be thought of an abstract way of grouping all the information needed to communicate between two components. So a simple definition could be a transaction is like a class object that includes all the necessary information needed for communication between two components. So let's take a simple example to make this clearer. So suppose say you have a bus uh, that is connected to a memory and you need to do a read or a write through the bus to the memory. So so if you have to do this do this transaction on the bus you need like several information like what kind of command are you going to issue on the bus whether it's a read or a write and based on the command you would want to know you would also want to have the information of what is the address that you're going to re, uh, drive on the bus what is the data that you're going to drive or read back from the bus and other information like how wide is your address bus or how wide is your data bus whether it's like a 32-bit or a 16-bit or a 64-bit address data bus etc. So if you were to abstract all this information into a class and you can define a transaction and then group all this information that are needed to be needed to communicate on this bus to the memory agent into a simple transaction. So that is a basic concept of transaction. You're basically abstracting all these low level group of information into a class definition and transaction or yeah this transaction class forms a very basic of how the OVM or UVM methodology is like built on top. So both OVM and UVM class library has its own base transactions that are defined in the base class. So OVM has something called like an OVM transaction class and UVM has something called like a UVM transaction class defined. So anybody who is kind of define who is kind of building a test bench on OVM or UVM uh, defines their own transactions by deriving from this base class and adding like more information specific to what they want to implement. So let's see an example which will make this like much more clear. So as I mentioned, uh, let's pick the same example of a read or a write transaction happening on the bus. So here is a simple class definition, class symbol transaction, which extends from the UVM transaction. So as I mentioned, the UVM provide, the base library provides a base class called UVM transaction. We'll see more about what those base class provides, etc. in the following lecture. But for now, understand that any transaction that you define for your test band, it needs to extend from the UVM or OVM transaction based on what methodology you are using. And then you define all the information that is needed for the symbol transaction. So in this case, you have a data member, which is of type data underscore T, which can be, which could be like some type defined as like say 31 down to zero, a bit 31 down to zero, or a logic 31 down to zero, or something of that sort. And you will have something similar, you need the address information, which is another random variable of type address underscore T. And then you have another variable which is an enum that can take like two possible values which is like write or a read. And then here you can also create like constraints uh, which are like system with log constructs. Uh, if you want to create this transaction with whatever kind of constraints you want. For example, this constraint is trying to limit the address to be always like less than tick edge 2000. So this was a symbol transaction or just nothing but like a symbol class definition which groups all the information needed for that specific transaction. Uh, so let's, so understanding that basic of transaction now let's see what is meant by transaction level modeling. So transaction level by modeling by definition you can think of it as an approach that consists of multiple processes communicating with each other. 
by sending transactions back and forth through some kind of channels. So what it means is like uh, it's an approach in which you model model the behavior by using several processes that communicate each other using transactions instead of say low level signal or low level informations. Um, using some kind of channels a channel could be say some kind of a FIFO or a mailbox or some kind of a method that one component can call on the other component to get information or to pass information so the, that is that approach is that approach in which you model using transactions that communicate through certain channels is called transaction level modeling so now let's look at uh, look at this to look at some examples to make this like more clear so a traditional or a typical example would be like a producer consumer model where you have two components one is a producer component that produces some kind of information and then you want to pass that information to another component which keeps consuming that information so that can be a typical example where you can model the producer as well as consumer uh, which have two components and instead of modeling all the info all the information that flows between producer and consumer at a low level uh, meaning like all the signal level or bit level information you could group all this into some kind of a transaction and then use some kind of a channel or a queue or a mailbox or whatever mechanism to pass this transaction between the producer and consumer so this modeling concept is called transaction level modeling now what are some of the benefits of transaction level modeling so transaction level modeling does abstracts a lot of time information so it reduces the number of activation of process so if you think in terms of simulation if you were to evaluate uh, evaluate your simulation at every change or every event of your all the low level information then that takes like a lot of simulation time in this case you are not evaluating at every clock when every signal changes you're only trying to evaluate or evaluate the transaction when the transaction is complete what i mean is like suppose say your write takes like say 10 clock cycles say you're doing a write which takes like 10 cycles to complete for transferring all the say data information then instead of evaluating or activating the process on every clock you only evaluate at the end of the 10th clock when you have the whole transaction grouped together so it's a way in which you can reduce activation of process and that saves your time that saves time and it's the same uh, yeah another definition is the RTL evaluation of net source signals versus evaluation of transactions so if you were to evaluate transaction at transaction boundary instead of evaluating at every change of uh, signal or a net then it saves you a lot of time so transaction level modeling gains by abstracting at the time uh, time granularity and the transaction level modeling also does abstract all your data information so instead of having all the bit by bit details of uh, whatever information you're passing between two components if you abstract all these into a transaction object then you're actually abstracting the data so again uh, again it's like it kind of instead of making your code uh, depend on like every bit by bit details and hard coding into whatever implementation we can abstract all that information into certain class objects and then it becomes uh, another angle of how you look how the transaction level modeling is done you can al you also the transaction level modeling also does abstract functionality so it does implement functionality using functions or process rather than real registers or circuits so again uh, there's another way in which you kind of abstract all your low level information into process or function level information which will also again like make the code or the modeling like more uh, configurable or reusable as well as uh, saves at evaluate saves in time because you don't have to evaluate with all the low level information so those are some of the uh, abstraction that is that is done when you do a transaction level modeling and it saves uh, saves both in simulation time as well as it saves it makes your code like more uh, configurable or reusable 
So going forward, so it's kind of important to understand this transaction level concepts for OVM and UVM because TLM or transaction level modeling is the basis for the modularity and reuse in OVM and UVM. Since we use transaction level modeling concepts to model all your test bench components and all your communication between the test bench components, it makes all these test bench components that are built in OVM and UVM modular and reusable across say different verification environments or different projects. So TLM is all about communication through method calls. So we saw the definition transaction level modeling is where you communicate through certain processes that sends transactions back and forth uh, through certain channels. So now let's see more about what those communication channels can be. So typically uh, in, with respect to OVM, a TLM defines a port and an export. A TLM port specifies API or the function call that needs to be used if say one company needs to send some transaction across a TLM channel and a TLM export by definition supplies implementation or the actual uh, actual definition actual implementation of that method when the port is called so these are two definitions you need to understand the TLM port is basically the function name that gets called when somebody some component has to communicate some transaction over a channel and the TLM export is nothing but the implementation of that specific function uh, by which that uh, communication happens on the TLM channel. So we'll see more examples to understand this better but uh, understand that port and export definition. And connections exist between ports and exports not between the components. So it's kind of important to understand this also because uh, the actual channel is basically a connection between a port and an export. Different components can use the same port and export to communicate on a, on a same channel or similar channels. So thereby you are kind of removing the restriction that only certain co the components are not really kind of tied together to a specific channel. So it kind of enables again like modularity and reusability across components as well as on the TLM channels. And transactions as we saw are nothing but like class objects. It's a way in which you abstract all the information. And ports and exports are parameterized in OVM and UVM by the transaction type to be communicated. So again, this makes the port and export definition not to be tied for a specific transaction. So based on what kind of transactions you're communicating on a channel, the corresponding port and its code it can be parameterized so that you can use the same port and export to communicate different kinds of transactions. So moving forward. So this, uh, this slide just shows like how OVM or UVM uh, uses this port and export to communicate between two components. So we'll see more details about the code but I just wanted to highlight like the two components here which is like an initiate, one is an initiator and the other is a target component both derived from OVM components and the initiator wants to send some kind of a transaction defined as like class transaction over this channel which is connected using a port and an export. So the initiator will typically have an OVM put port of parameterized type transaction and in the run method you basically do a p port dot put which is basically putting a transaction on the specific port and this put will translate into the actual implementation which is in the target uh, where you actually define as to like what that put should translate into and that's how the uh, communication happens between the say this initiator OVM component and the target OVM component and the connection happens at a high level in the ENB where both initiator and target are connected. So I just want to show you this diagram that uh, shows like how initiator and target communicates using a channel connected with a port and export. We'll see more examples in uh, in a later lecture where we uh, start learning about more about the code and the base class libraries of OVM. So in this last slide, I just wanted to highlight some of the TLM interfaces supported by OVM and UVM. So basically on the unidirectional, uh, there are like blocking and non-blocking uh, interfaces supported. Blocking tasks are nothing but like that blocks until the completion happens. Uh, 
output and get.p coverage examples and then on blocking you basically have the try versions of the same. We'll learn more about this in the later lecture but just wanted to highlight that.